So what's going on guys, it's JMS Speedboxing, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel before you click on to any of my videos, also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions on what I'm saying in any of my videos, like always, it is appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub or two on my channel. So, £122 WBA World Champion, WBA Super Bantamweight Champion, Guillermo Rigandau will be fighting on June 17th, he'll be on the undercard of the Andre Ward, so I cover every match. He'll be fighting his mandatory challenger, Moses Flores, for the WBA Super, Super Bantamweight title and the IBO Super Bantamweight titles will be on the line. And Guillermo Rigandau is a fighter, in my opinion, who could have been a fantastic fighter. He is a fighter who, in my opinion is probably one of the most avoided fighters I've ever seen enter a boxing ring and he is probably one of the most unluckiest fighters I have ever seen in terms of being a professional fighter and the way that he's been ducked and the way that he's been poorly managed and stuff like that because this was a guy who came out of the amateurs and was seen as probably one of the best amateurs to have ever lived he was a two-time Olympic gold medalist in Athens and in Beijing this guy as an amateur was a star and then when he turned professional he managed to win a world title within his first 10 fights and he managed to unify the super bantamweight division in about 12 fights I think it might have been even less than 12 fights or something like that anyway so this guy in my opinion when his stock should have really went up it went totally down for him because he fought Nindy O'Donnell in 2013. He was promoted by Bob Arum at the time, Guillermo Rigan now, and so was Nini O'Donnell. So it was an in-house fight, but Nini O'Donnell, in Bob Arum's eyes, I think he was trying to mould Donnell into the next Pacquiao kind of fighter because Donnell was a fighter who was just knocking guys out, putting on spectacular performances. So, Aaron matched him up with Rigando, expecting it to be a very competitive fight. But it wasn't. Like, Rigando totally went in the air and totally controlled Nanito Donnier for 12 rounds. Yes, Rigando was dropped in the 10th round, but it was more of a flash knockdown. And Nanito Don... Not Nanito Donnier. Guillermo Rigando is a fighter who can be dropped in fights. He hasn't got a defence that's unbreakable or anything like that. He can be dropped in fights... Um, Rigando, but the thing with Guillermo Rigando, he's probably one of the best counter punchers alive today. Like, I can't name many fighters who counter punch as good as Guillermo Rigando. He kind of like sets up like this little jab, and then it kind of like gets the other guy to throw something like this pouring jab, and then he hits you with a left hand. That can just be devastating. Like we saw it when he fought Jazza Dickens. I think that might have been his last fight. Jazza Dickens in 2016. And he landed a counter punch on Jazza Dickens. And he totally just obliterated his jaw. Like Guillermo Rigandau is a dangerous fighter. And the way he's been avoided in his career has been disgusting. Like the guys that super bantamweight. You know guys like Oscar De La Hoya. Who promoted Leo Santa Cruz. And he was trying to get Leo Santa Cruz to fight Guillermo Rigan now. And then not long after that, Leo Santa Cruz left Golden Boy. So Guillermo Rigan now didn't get that fight. And then you had Carl Frampton and Scott Quigg basically saying they didn't want to fight Guillermo Rigan now because it was high risk, low reward. So basically they're saying, we don't want to fight this guy because we're not going to get much money and there's a high chance that will beat us. So it can't get any worse ducking than that from fighters. When they're basically saying, this guy might be too good for us and we're not getting paid much money. So this guy has just been ducked badly in his career. And it is sad because this guy is a very good fighter. And he's probably one of the most technically sound fighters in the world today. But at 36 years old, he hasn't really got many miles left on the clock. He is a Cuban fighter. He started his career late. He didn't start his career until he was, well his pro career until he was... 30, 31 years old and he was fast track Guillermo Rigan now but his career has totally stalled since that Nanito Donnier fight because Bob Allen dropped him 
straight away basically because he just said that Nidhi Adonai is too boring, he's not exciting. And I think when Rigendahl schooled Donny, I think that really pissed Bob Arum off because he was expecting this fight to be competitive and he was trying to mould Donny into his next cash cow and Rigendahl just totally dominated him and that really pissed Bob Arum off. And if I'm Kalima Rigendahl, then he needs to go to somebody like Al Haven Someone who can promote him, someone who can get him out there. And Eddie Hearn, maybe, like Lewis Ortiz tried it with Eddie Hearn, so why can't Guillermo Riggin now try it? But promoters don't want to promote him either. So you're pretty much fucked if you're Guillermo Riggin now because fighters don't want to fight you. Promoters don't want to promote you because they think that your style's not entertaining enough and you won't generate enough money. Fighters don't want to fight you because they see you as too dangerous and you, they're not going to get much money fighting you. So, in that kind of situation, what can you really do? It's just a fact of being too good sometimes. Sometimes being too good can affect your career in a negative way. And Guillermo Regan now doesn't really speak any English. I don't think he speaks English at all. But he is a bit of a character. Guillermo Rigan now, even though he doesn't speak English, he's called out fighters many times. He's called out guys like Carl Frampton and Scott Quigg for the ducking, mocking him on social media. And no one wanted to fight him, even if they're getting mocked by other people, Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg, Leo Santa Cruz. They're still saying, no, don't want to fight him, too risky, not going to get enough money. So, yeah, Guillermo Rigan now, very unlucky fighter. He fights on June 17th. Hopefully he can put on a good performance. Because this is a good fighter. And at 36 years old. How long has this guy got left? And it's just a waste of talent to be honest. Being too good. Can be negative for your career sometimes. So yeah. Comment below in the comment section. What do you guys think of this? It's JM at Speedboxing.